In the previous video, we had created the home page of our site, which looks like this. We had also installed WordPress and set up the GraphQL API so that we can start fetching the data. If it's the first time you are watching this series, then I have given the link to the playlist above so that you can watch the previous videos. And in this video, we will be creating the blog index page. Currently, the blog index page is displaying a simple text. This is our blog index page. We want to replace that with a list of posts fetched from the WordPress backend API. So let's go to the code editor. This file, the index.js file in the pages directory is the route corresponding to the site home page. While the route for the blog index page is located within the subdirectory called blog. Let's open that. Currently it outputs an h1 heading tag which we saw just before in the browser. Before continuing, let me place the editor and the browser windows side by side so that you can view the changes as I edit the code. Ok. And in the terminal, I have already started the development server by running the command npm run dev. First, let me delete this line and add the react fragment instead which wraps the code. This blog index component requires a few other components, so let's import them at the top. The first one is the built-in head component which allows adding and modifying page title, meta description, etc. Followed by that, we also want the link and image components. In addition to that, we want the custom built site header component we built in the previous video. Here the default function blog home needs to render the list of posts, right? So it needs access to that data. The recommended way to do that in Next.js is to provide such data as function arguments or props. In React, a prop is an argument passed to the function components which contains the data. So let's add a prop called all posts. Here we have used JavaScript object destructuring to extract the property all posts from the argument object. But where is the blog home function called and how to pass the data? Luckily, you need not worry about that because it's the job of the next framework to call the default function blog home during build time. And to pass the props data to the function, next gives another function called get static props. So you can define a function named get static props in the same file which returns the data as an object. So export async function get static props. And the data returned by the get static props function will be available to the default function, which is the function blog home as an argument. That's how the internals of Next.js work. Also note the difference that the function blog home is the default export while get static props is a normal export. Within this function, we can also perform tasks like fetching data from the remote API before returning it. So we want to build the query and send a request to our WordPress API to fetch the post list. I think it will be a good idea to move that to a separate function so that get static props remains clean. Also, it allows reusing the function in other page components if required. So let's go to the file explorer and within the project root, create a new folder called lib and inside lib we can create a new file called posts.js. This file is where we will put all the custom functions related to fetching data for our blog, including the function to fetch the list of posts. So let's export a function called get all posts.
then we need to build the graphql query to fetch the post list so constant query equals okay let's use the graph iql ide on our wordpress dashboard to compose the query instead of typing it manually so log into the wordpress dashboard then open the graph iql ide and open the query composer For each post, we want to fetch all the important details such as the title, slug, published date, featured image as well as the categories assigned to it. So on the left side, expand the post section, then expand nodes and select the fields one by one. Okay, posts, nodes, then we want the published date slug title post excerpt and the featured image as well but you might know that featured image itself is a content type in wordpress that's why it has its own subtree of fields expand it then go to the media details section where we can find the file and the sizes details that is the image thumbnail sizes generated by WordPress. Select the source URL width and height. As I am doing this, you can see the equivalent query on the right side. Then we need the category details as well. Remember WordPress allows grouping a single post into multiple categories. Category also has its own subtree like the featured image. Expand nodes. We want the category name and slug. In addition to all this, we also want the page info. Remember, we are fetching the list of posts and blogs can have hundreds or even thousands of posts. And the page info information helps fetching posts page by page so that it will not overload the server. It's an alternative to the traditional limit and offset based SQL queries and does not slow down even if you have tens or thousands of rows to fetch. Okay, you might think that the query is a little long, but the advantage is that it allows getting all the required data in a single request. On the other hand, if we were relying on the REST API, an endpoint returns a fixed set of data fields. And it often contains a lot of unnecessary information. Then it's the job of the front-end developer to wade through it and extract the relevant data. Whereas this one makes the job easier for the developer. Okay, let me copy the whole query to the clipboard. Come back to the editor and paste it within our constant inside a property called query. Wrap it inside back text so that we can preserve multiple lines without causing errors. Then we need to perform the fetch request using the JavaScript fetch function. Maybe we can put that into a separate file so that we can reuse it for other queries. So create a new file called GraphQL request.js within the lib folder. Then define a function export default function, let it be async function GraphQL request. The function accepts one argument, which is our query. Constant URL equals the endpoint URL that is https wp.abhinavar.com slash GraphQL. Define one more constant called headers, which contains the content type header. Set its value to application slash JSON. Now comes the response constant, which equals await fetch. The first argument is the URL. The second argument is an object that contains our headers. Then set the request mother to post because we are sending it as a post request. 
then within the request body pass the query after stringifying it json dot stringify query okay now we can call the function json upon the constant res to extract the response in json format oh there is a typo here async okay the function graphql request is ready to be used and we want to import it to the posts.js file okay now we can call the function constant res json equals await graphql request and pass the query object in order to use the await keyword this function should also be async now if the request is performed successfully constant rest json contains the complete data including our post list it can be accessed as data dot posts because if you look at the format of the return data here it goes like this data posts nodes okay finally return all posts now we can go back to our route file and call this function get all posts from within the get static props function first of all import the new function import get all posts uh, there is one change i want to make there was no need to set it as export default normal export is enough because this file is not a route file it's just a collection of functions so all functions within this file have the same status so no need for a default export and the import statement becomes import get all posts within curly brackets that's how you import individual functions from a file call the get all posts function and assign its value to a constant named all posts now return an object which contains all posts within the props property this is how you return data from get static props which will then be available to the function component let's get back to the blog home function and in the browser open the blog index page let's set the page title using the head component set the title text as blog and it has changed first we want to create a hero section which show the title and the tagline on top of a background image the side header should also appear on top of that let's add a container div element set the class name attribute height 50% of the viewport height minimum height let it be 20 rem later you can adjust it to make it responsive on all devices for the background image we can use the same image used on the site home page bg url home.jpg okay the image is showing set the position to relative then add an absolute position div inside that to create the overlay effect background slate 900 inset 0 z index 0 and opacity 40 percent okay that looks good now call the site header component it's showing up let's fix it by adding a few class names first one is header blog also set the z index to 10 and position relative okay that looks good maybe we can put it inside a container div and center it 
class name equals container set the maximum width on large screen devices and mx auto class to center it now put the site header component inside that okay now it appears centered below that we want to display the title that is blog followed by a tagline that says read our latest articles so add the text blog inside an h1 heading tag and the text read our latest articles within a paragraph tag it's there but invisible because the color is still black let's fix that text size 6xl and text center color slate 100 relative positioning z index 10 vertical padding 8 okay for the tagline position relative z index 10 text center color slate 200 text size 2 xl okay let's move on to the main section where we will iterate the list of posts and display them so create an html main tag and inside that a section tag set the class name as post list and give some top margin Within that, add an unordered list tag. Open curly brackets to iterate the JavaScript array. We are gonna use the map function to do that. Let the variable post be the individual post item. The map function returns the list item tag. There is some error, cannot read properties of undefined. Let's try refreshing the page and now it's working. Set the key attribute to post.slug because whenever we are iterating an array, we want to set the key attribute. We want to show each item in a two column format. On the left side, we want to display the featured image and on the right side, we want to output the post title, excerpt, date and the category. We can use the CSS grids to achieve that. So set the display to grid and the number of grid columns to 5. Because here we want to display it in a 2 is to 3 width ratio. Let the column gap be 4 and margin bottom 4. Then inside that create two new divs. Add class call span 2 for the first div. It's gonna contain the featured image, so add a custom class featured image. For the second div, call span 3. Okay. I think there is no need for this class now, so let me remove it. Let's start with the second div before dealing with the featured image. The first element we want to output is the post title inside and its two heading tag. And we want the title linking to the individual post page. Let's use the link component for that. Link href equals blog slash post dot slug. And the link text is post dot title. Okay. The post titles are already showing up and they are linked to the corresponding post pages. That means it's working. Below the title we want to show the post excerpt. Let's use a div element for that. We can use the dangerously set inner html attribute to set the divs inner html. One thing I want to mention here is that the excerpt is already an HTML string, not plain text. Let's check the graph IQL IDE to verify that. 
when you check the accept property you can see a field called format which offers two options row and rendered rendered is the default option and it outputs the content as an html string instead if we set the format to row the result will be null because it requires authentication that's how the plugin wp graphql works fetching any field in row format requires authentication maybe i will show you that in a later video for now let's set the format to rendered okay let's set the dangerously set inner html attribute value to post dot accept the accept is showing up on the right side let's display the post categories below that insert a new div posted under iterate post dot categories dot nodes array using the map function category is the individual category we can link category name text to the category archive page using the link component href equals category slash category dot slug then set the key attribute also to the corresponding category dot slug value link text is category dot name now the categories are showing up posted under inspiration posted under photography etc let's beautify that by adding some css classes starting with the post title h2 element vertical padding py4 now the link inside that let the link color be light blue increase the text size also change the hover color to slightly darker blue color okay now comes the post excerpt make the text slightly bigger text lg then we have the categories py4 then the category link okay now it looks nice next we want to deal with the featured image it requires a little more work because as you can see in our graphql request we want to go through all these details media details sizes and things like that also some posts may not have a featured image set from wordpress so we have to take into account that as well and set a default image okay let's create a new file called featured image.js inside the components directory import the image and link components at the top of the file then export the default function featured image the purpose of this function is to return the featured image for a given post in html format it receives the current post as an argument create a variable img which is going to contain the image data for now set its value to an empty string now let's set the default image in case no featured image is set from wordpress constant default featured image let's use an image hosted on the wordpress site itself okay let me use this image set its url as our constant value we want to set the default width and height as well keep it like that next let's check if the post has already a featured image set so if it's set then this field featured image will not be null so we can use that inside our if condition let size equals it's available within media details size equals post dot featured image dot node dot media details dot sizes of zero
that means we are using the first item in the sizes array which is the full size image others are thumbnail sizes generated by wordpress maybe we can use them later to make the images responsive for now it's enough let's use that image to set our img variable make it an object src property equals sizes dot source url width size dot width and height equals size dot height okay else if featured image is null we will use the default values the function should return the featured image linked to the parent post so let's use the link and image components Okay, let's go back to the post index page and import the featured image component. Now we can call it from here. Featured image pass the current post as a prop. But we got an error invalid src prop. hostname wp.apnevar.com is not configured under images in your next.config.js why it happened because we are loading an image from an external domain and next.js requires you to add the domain names to the config file before you can load images from them so we need to go to the next configuration file then add a new property called images remote patterns you can check the documentation to see more details about this now just understand that we need to add it to make it work protocol https hostname the url here in this case our wordpress url followed by port let it be an empty string for now you might get a small warning here for keeping it empty but for now it doesn't matter path name any path so add a wild card okay now that we have modified the config file we want to restart the server so stop the current running server and execute npm run dev again Okay now we can view the featured images besides each post but the size is a little off so we can style it and fix it Let's see how it looks in full screen okay so we want to do two things first we want to style this featured image and second we want to put everything inside a container element so that it appears centered Let's add the container class to the section tag. Container, mx auto, and max width on large devices, max w five xl. Okay, that's fixed. Next, we want to style the featured image. Let's give it a rounded corner, and also fix its size on smaller screen sizes. Now it's towards the top. We want to stretch it to the full height. So go to the featured image file and add class names to the image component. First, let's set the height to hundred percent. H full. But now its aspect ratio is screwed. 
we can fix that by setting the object fit property to cover object cover okay also make the corners rounded by adding the class rounded excel and it's also responsive i think it's enough for now i am not going into more minute details as it can make the video longer but before ending this video let's add the site footer as well let's go to the components directory and create a new file called sitefooter.js export default function sitefooter return we just want to display a copyright notice that's all just a simple site footer so add an html footer tag and set the id attribute to site footer okay copyright year 2022-2023 followed by the site name now let's go to the blog index page and just like we did with the site header component import site footer as well then call it after the closing main tag it's working let's style that with a little bit of padding and a background color div class name equals py3 vertical padding 3 then set the display to flex justify center background slate 200 Okay all right i hope that's enough and in the upcoming videos we will create the remaining pages